Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to spend a little bit more time on scientific notation. We're going to perform calculations with scientific notation, and we're going to start with addition and subtraction, and then we'll move on to multiplication and division. And I'm sure that you all have done these before, but in chemistry class, the way we enter things into the calculator is a little different. So let's begin with addition and subtraction. So if we have 4 times 10 to the 6, which is 4 million, plus 3 times 10 to the 6, which is 3 million, and you'll notice they have the same magnitude, their exponent is the same, then we can just add them up. 4 plus 3 is 7, and carry down that same power of 10. So if the exponents are the same, we simply add or subtract the numbers in front and bring that exponent down. And that's because they have the same magnitude. Now here we have 4 times 10 to the 6 minus 3 times 10 to the 6. So 4 million minus 3 million, 1 million. So the same holds true for subtraction if the numbers have the same magnitude. And that's really what the exponent is all about. The power of 10 is telling you the magnitude of the number. So if they're the same, then you can just add them or subtract them. Easy peasy. However, if one number is... 4 times 10 to the 6, and the second number is 3 times 10 to the 5th, you can't just simply add them because they're not the same magnitude. This is 4 million, and this is 300,000. So when the exponents are not the same, meaning the number does not have the same magnitude, we have two choices. You can move the decimal to make them the same, or you can convert them back to standard notation first, or you can use your calculator. But Again, let's say we just, we're doing it on pencil and paper. So I'm going to show you both methods. So moving the decimal on the smaller number. And the thing is, sometimes when people move the decimal, they get all confused. If you're one of those people, no worries. Just either use your calculator or convert it to standard notation first. So here we have our 4 times 10 to the 6, and we have our 3 times 10 to the 5th and we're going to move over that decimal to the left. And so then what we would have is 4 million plus 0.3 million. And again, our exponent is the same now, so we would add the 2 up, and our power of 10 is going to be 10 to the 6. The other way is to convert them to standard notation and then add. So here we have 4 times 10 to the 6 and 3 times 10 to the 5th. So that's 4 million plus 300,000. So then when we add the met up, we get 4 million 300,000. And then we could convert that back to scientific notation. And that would be our 4.30 times 10 to the 6. And I'll just remind you here briefly, this number had 3 sig figs. This number had 3 sig figs. And our answer has 3 sig figs just by going back and forth between standard and scientific notation, we don't lose the number of significant digits that were in that original measurement. So now, a little bit more tricky. Performing calculations in scientific notation when you're doing multiplication and division. So for multiplication and division, let's say you were given 4.1 times 10 to the 6th, and you're multiplying that times 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 7. You're going to use your calculator, and you're going to follow these guidelines. First off, do not, I can't say this enough times, do not use the caret key, the little arrow thing. Instead, use whatever your calculator has. Sometimes it says EE. Sometimes it says EXP, and sometimes there will be a little button that says times 10 to the X. The reason we don't use the caret key is that for the calculations we'll be doing this year, using a lot of numbers in scientific notation, if you use the caret key, you have to be very, very picky and careful with using parentheses for everything. And if you miss one parentheses, the whole thing goes south. So you have to be mindful of the syntax on your particular calculator. So I'm going to show you three calculators. So this is one type of Texas instrument, and for this one, 
It has a little EE button, so that's what you would press. For this one, which is very common, you use the second, and then if you look right here above the uh, number 7 where it says X to the minus 1, the shift key would give you the EE button. So it's right there. And then on this Casio style calculator located in a different spot, and it's an EXP button. So now when you enter the numbers in, what you're going to see is a display and depending on the type of calculator you have you have three different ways that it looks so in this case this number that's showing in the display would be 3.3 .3 times 10 raised to the seventh power so it's offset up on the ti 30x2 solars the way it shows it is it shows the power of 10 as an e so I would read this as 4.1 times 10 to the 6th times 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 7th. So the E means times 10 raised to whatever power. And then here on this Casio display, 1.353 times 10 raised to the 14th power. So again, these are the buttons that you're going to be using when you're entering in these uh, powers of 10. So now let's say we were going to do this calculation. What would I actually do to punch it into my calculator? So I'm going to go with how I would do it on the, um, the Texas Instruments Solar one, the pink one in the picture. So I would press 4.1, then I would press second EE, and then I would just enter 6. Notice I don't have to put any 10s in there. The EE means times 10 raised to the 6th power. Then I'd press times, because I'm multiplying, and then I would enter 3.3, .3, press second function, and EE, enter times 10 to the 7th. So all I have to put is the 7, no 10. And then press the equal sign, and it's going to give me this number, 1.353 times 10 raised to the 14th power. So the display should read something like this, which I showed you in the previous slide. And since these numbers all had only two significant figures, you would round to 1.4. So 1.3 would be my last significant digit here. The number after it is a 5, so I would round that to 1.4. <clears throat> So one more time, what that would look like on the calculator, 1.353, and this offset means times 10 to the 14th. Here I have my 1.353, and if you see here really tiny, it says times 10 raised to the 14th power, and here 1.353 times 10 to the 14th, reminding you, you're always going to enter using the EE key. So for the this TI, 30x2s, you have to press second and then EE to make that happen. And for this calculator, you press the EXP button. So I hope that helps. We'll practice some more. For now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.